gospel, I, I mean, just picture that he's staring right through us. You know, he's staring to us, looking at us, but he's staring right through us. His eyes are, are burning away uh, so many hurts and the brokenness and everything that is in the everyday life. But every day when you pick up that book and you stare at him, he is healing us. He is setting us free. He's bringing laughter. Laughter. Yeah. I mean, don't you love when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit? And you're so filled with the joy of Jesus that his joy is just overtakes us. See, the joy of Jesus heals. The joy of Jesus sets us free. There's something in our inner man named God, the Holy Spirit, is going to come up out of our bellies this morning, out of our hearts, and infuse us with light and love and the power of forgiveness uh, we just welcome you here online. I'm just talking. We had an amazing time of worship this morning. I mean, amazing. Like the Lord was here. We were filled to overflowing. And I, I'm just so thankful, Lord, that here out at 603 Penn Avenue this morning that you are in our midst. Uh, we must believe your word. You said in your word that when two or three are gathered in your name, that you are right here in our midst. Amen? What does that mean to believe that? I mean, we're going to talk about two weeks. I'll be here this week and in two weeks from now on that Sunday morning. Awaken to truth. I'm believing that people will go out to rev19.org and here at Freedom Church and give us testimonies on how they were awakened to truth. There's the whole Bible is, is the truth. The, he is the final, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the way and the truth. Uh, nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ because he is the truth. He sent one just like him, the spirit of truth. This is what I'm saying today. We are going to awaken to every single word this morning that's coming up out of my heart, I want you to awaken to. I'm planning to awaken to it. You might have heard it a thousand times, a hundred times, ten times. But I believe that the word that's coming forth this morning is going to awaken us, change our lives completely. We're going to have, see, when you're awakened to something that God said, his word is living, active, and powerful. Powerful. Whether it is to you or to me, it doesn't matter because the word says it is. Can I hear an amen? We are going to believe that what God says about himself, what he says about us, and what he says in this book to be true, truly is. And there will be some today, maybe if you're watching online, that will just be sitting at home with their cup of coffee going, amen, 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 and I'm excited. But as we believe, now listen closely, as we believe, something changes. We might say, oh, we believe, we're a Christian, we're a believer. But what do we really truly believe? When we read the word, do we believe every single thing that we're, we're reading? Because the word transforms us. The word brings power to our hearts. So I'm sure there's a lot of word in here that I believe with my mind, but my heart has not been awakened to it yet. Can I hear an amen? The reason why I say amen is we want to agree with what I'm saying this morning. We always want to agree, but there's something so powerful about believing and being awakened to truth that will change our lives every single day. None of us have arrived we're working on being transformed by God's glory, those that are believers, those that are born of God. You know, there's a lot of people sitting in the church today in chairs and pews. It might be a Baptist church, a Pentecostal church, a Catholic church, a Lutheran church that have not been awakened to truth yet. You know, they're curious, but there's a time that when the Holy Spirit awakens us to truth, we get born again. Not one minute before. We don't decide. 
God opens up our hearts. He opens up our ears. So what we hear, we believe. Amen? Now, I'll be saying amen a lot to this because I need a deeper faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. There's a faith that God wants to give us and exercise what we already believe, but he wants us, our temple, to be full. Our temple to be full. Our temple to be full of the word of God. Our temple to be full of God's spirit. Our temple to be full of God. Is that what we're believing for this morning? Amen. Now, when I first started, I talked about this bottle of water, but I never opened the lid. So hold on one minute. This isn't what I planned on going out to today, but I believe that uh, the Lord's given it to me with my message that I'm talking about, Awaken to Truth. Um, I want to go out to Mark, the chapter, uh, chapter 11 in the book of Mark, because I want you to understand about believing. Believing is... The power of God inside of us bringing truth alive to our heart that changes our life. Believing isn't saying, oh, I believe, and then we go on with our life the same way. Definitely, you might have heard it, but if it doesn't penetrate, it's not the full faith that God wants us to have. Amen? So, <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah. So, Mark chapter 11. Now, when I was diagnosed with leukemia in 2003... This was a very powerful scripture to me. And in 2004, leomyosarcoma, I went through a cancer time and three years of panic attacks. And, uh, you know, I had to stand on God's word. That means I had to believe for God's word before anything came to pass. There's something where God gives us faith to believe and stand on our word, on his word, and speak it out of our mouth. There's something that we can believe it in our minds, but faith is confessing it out of our mouth. That's what the Bible says. Faith is confessing God's word out of our mouth. And faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. So what does that mean? That means that as we speak it, our heart is going to believe it more than yesterday. We're going to speak it to the realm because the Bible says we overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb, the word of our own testimony. What are we saying about the blood? What are we saying about our life in Christ? What are we saying about being born again? What are we telling people about the Holy Spirit? What are we sharing out of our hearts? That is what's alive inside of you, what you're sharing. That is the only thing that's alive. You might be sharing it to the second realm. I'm not saying that you're sharing it to maybe another person yet, if you're a new believer. But you're sharing, you're believing it, you're reading the word of God, you're pray reading the word back. Praying means conversation with God. Praying means that you're making declarations about what he already said and what he would already do. Faith is a mustard seed of faith, but as we exercise it, God says that our hearts are connected to his heart, and we grow. We must grow in Christ. We must be fully saturated, every cell of our being, with Christ. The love of God was poured out in our hearts, it says in Romans 5. Now, I just said maybe 30 things already. Do we believe what I said this morning so far? How is it affecting your heart, your life, your person, your family, your every day, your whole entire life of just what I said so far? Is it moving us? Is it changing us? Is it penetrating? Is it more exciting about the vacation that we're going to take next week or the following week? That for sure is in our mouth. If we just hit the lottery, that for sure is in our mouth. I'm going to be a grandmother, that's for sure in my mouth. June 1st, my daughter-in-law, can I hear an amen, is going to have a baby boy, Luke Joseph. 
You know, we're already decreeing and declaring. I have this little ultrasound in my office around all my pens and and uh, markers it's like a little container that you keep your pens on i reach out and i touch his ultrasound and i prophesy over his life if we don't prophesy over our children and our grandchildren if the whole entire world is trying to take our children and our grandchildren and manipulating everything about their lives and who we are as parents we better get the word of god in our mouth so we can save the children can i hear an amen we are the solution, amen? Jesus already paid the price. If you want your children and your grandchildren saved for the glory of God, we are the ones that have to do it. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that your words spoken out of your mouth can change all eternity for your children and your grandchildren? Amen. Yeah, there's the power of our testimony. How do we overcome Satan again? By the word of our testimony, nothing else, not, there's not one other way the Bible tells us that we can overcome Satan. It's by the word of our testimony. And we don't love our own life. That's our current soul life that's being transformed day in and day out. Our will, our mind, and emotions are changing daily to look like the mind of Christ, the will of God and the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? That is the will of God for our lives. Now, Mark 11, normally before you're born again and you have God living inside of you, you know, the Bible says, yes, he runs after the just and the unjust, and he wants to save everybody to repent and come into the saving knowledge. But we have a privilege as born-again believers to pray, to decree, to speak God's word, to do the same things that Jesus did when he walks on the earth. Do you believe this today? Do you believe that you have the same resurrection power that rose Jesus from the dead? Do you believe that today? This is what we have. We must awaken to the truth. I'm going to talk for two or three weeks in a row about being awakened now you can go back to Freedom Church, and this will be on the Revelation 19 Ministries YouTube channel and Facebook page, and keep hitting pause and write down every word that I spoke today out of the Word of God, and it's all truth. Whether we see it with our natural eyes isn't what faith is. We walk by faith and not by sight. And as we exercise the seed of faith that God has put inside of us, that we speak it out to the second realm, as we speak it out to one another, the seed of Christ is growing in the inside. Mark eleven twenty two. Now God has given us the blueprint, and God has told us how to do this narrow road that we chose to get on. He told us how to do it. So we got to pay attention and believe that if we don't forgive, God can't forgive us. That's a truth I want you to, to recognize this morning. You know, I talk to people on the altar lines and everything. Are you holding any unforgiveness? Are you holding any bitter root? God says in he Hebrews 12, you can write this down, that the bitter root can be plucked out by the grace of God. There's not one abuse or accusation or any misfortune or anything that happened in our life that the grace of God can't fix and change and heal and take the brokenness of our lives and make us whole. Amen? Who would want to serve any other God except the God of power, the God of grace, the God of love, the God of peace? No one has peace in this world in 2022 right now. No one unless they have Christ. He's the only one. He's the peacemaker. When you have the kingdom of God within, there's only three things God says. He's the king of the kingdom, and spiritually, we're uh, an organism once we're born again in God's kingdom, in his citizenship of heaven. We are connected to God Almighty that created heaven and earth. Do we believe this? We are one with him, the Bible says. And the, and the thing that always puzzles me is even though when he's in me and I'm either having a bad moment in my life or I can't feel him at all or I'm not 
he has created us in this way. The more that we have him and the more we talk to him, the more that we exercise him and he is moved out of our spirit as we drink and eat of the living word and drink of his spirit. Drink of him. Uh, I can't say this word right, but we, there's a metabolism, uh, metabolical um, power, uh, the grace of God that's changing us into the image of God. This is what he wants us to do, look like Christ, but we're not automatically going to look like him. We're not automatically going to look like Christ when we get born again. He did all that he was going to do at the cross, and now even Paul said in Galatians 4.19 that he's crying out to be formed in Christ. Amen? So here I am. This is just the opening that I just said today. God, we just thank you and praise you that people are awakening to every single scripture. We need to be awakened to every single scripture, Lord, and then pray it back to you. So Mark eleven twenty four, we're starting at, at um, 22 here. <clears throat> we're taught, he just cursed the fig tree, Jesus. He's getting ready to go to the cross he just, he just cursed the fig tree because he is going to turn to the Gentiles. You know, uh, he, this, this gospel is for the Jews and the Gentiles. And, and, and so many people, uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, the people are turning their backs uh, on Jesus Christ. He knows what's going to happen to Israel. He knows that he walked on the earth for three years. And he knows what's coming. And he says this here, we need the faith of Jesus Christ. Nothing in our own, uh, our own faith will work. It's his faith. As you read the word of God, he says it's the faith, his faith. It's a seed of faith. It's faith to believe what the first century church started when Jesus walked on the earth. There's nothing new today. The word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, just like Jesus is. The word is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. There's great, incredible, beautiful nuggets in the Old Testament that are foreshadows of the fulfilled Christ that we can understand him better. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, now God is talking to his disciples there is that we have to, we have a lot of mountains in our lives there's a mountain of unbelief that is the number one mountain in your life and in my life what we don't believe for a mountain of unbelief we have to believe what Jesus Christ said because he is the exact representation of the Father. He only says what his Father says. He only does what his Father said. He even said to Philip, if you haven't seen me, if Philip did, said, just show us the Father. He said, have you been with me this long? When you see me, you see the Father. Jesus Christ is the exact re representation of the Father. In John 10, I believe it's verse 30, he says, the Father and I are one. Amen. When we want to know God, we look to Jesus. We look to Jesus. We look to Jesus. We look to Jesus. He's going to give us everything that we know, have to know. Have faith in God, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done we have to believe before we see it it says he will have whatever he says if it's the will of god you will have whatever you say maybe not the first time you got to call on every angel the holy spirit Every heavenly host, we got to get it in our mouth. We got to say it till we believe it. And when we say it, and then when we don't see it, we stand and believe it, no matter if we can see it or not. God's word is truth, no matter if we see it or not. We don't go by our experiences. We go by the word of God. 
And when God's word manifests, it becomes an experience. Amen? But until then, the truth is the truth is the truth is the truth. And the spirit of truth came to reveal truth to us. So let's awaken this morning. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe. Now watch, this is the key. You might have heard this a thousand times. I'm going to bring it to you in a little bit different today. <clears throat> Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. And you will have them. <clears throat> we must believe the word of God. <clears throat> the only evidence we have in believing is what's coming out of our mouth. We might believe in our mind, but what's coming our, out of our mouth is our faith, is what we believe, what we stand against. Jesus Christ already took out Satan at the cross. He broke all the power of Satan at the cross. Why does our world look like it does? Because we're living as citizens from the realm of heaven. And God is looking at you and looking at me this morning to speak life and blessing and curse the curses that he already paid for when he was, we were redeemed by the curse. We have to speak. We have to get it in our mouth. And this might be something new today. Maybe your church doesn't teach this out there in your home today. And I, I just want you to know that faith has to arise out of our heart and into our mouth. When we believe that we were believers and we believe Jesus Christ was Lord, did the pastor that was bringing you just say, sit down and think about it? Or did he say, confess Jesus Christ is Lord? Amen. And the more that we confess that he's Lord and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, we will be saved. That's what the Bible says. But the Bible says that resurrection power that raised him from the dead, we also have. That means we have to exercise it. That could be at the, you know, giant, wherever you shop at the... You know, wherever you're getting gas, at your family reunions, in your neighborhood, when you're cutting the grass and you're talking to a neighbor, you just share something. One scripture can turn a life around in one moment. Verse 25, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Do we as believers think that we can stand and not forgive? Listen, we're put to the test over these last two years, you know, for all the wrongdoing and all the hypocrisy and all the lies that are out there, all the heresy that we have to look at. It's so quick to put all that in our mouth, but are we standing up against and speaking life and blessing and God's word over every wicked person? Over every unsaved person. If God sowed me grace, can we sow grace and mercy to others? Can I hear an amen? There's only one way that we will achieve this day in and day out for the rest of our lives. We must have faith in God. We must speak to the mountains in our lives. We must fully surrender our heart and life to Jesus Christ. We must go low so God can lift us up. We must be full of humility. We must be full of God's grace. He extended it to us. The worst offense we can forgive. Resentment will eat you alive. Bitterness will eat you alive. You will never encounter God. You will drink and the fountain will be shut off. If Jesus Christ paid that every sin could be taken away, we're going to learn about abiding today and in two weeks from now because I'm setting us up for victory <laughs> in Jesus Christ. I'm setting us up for victory in Jesus Christ. 
We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are ambassadors. We've been washed by the blood. I said something to my husband yesterday. I can't remember what it is. All the brainwashing that's going on in this country and in the school system and all the things that we're seeing, brainwashing. There's brainwashing in corporate, in corporate America. There's brainwashing going on. But if you have been washed, if your brain, if your conscience has been washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, your conscience has been washed and cleansed by the blood of, of the Lamb, you will not be deceived. If you are lovers of truth, you will not be deceived. You will stand for righteousness, and that is the scepter of God's kingdom. Righteousness and biblical justice. Can I hear an amen? It's the fullness, the Bible. It tells us everything. How to raise our children. How to love. How, how like, it's every tribe, tongue, and nation has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Can I hear an amen? When we are in God's family, all our skin color is different. It's his family, black, white, Asian, it doesn't matter, Hispanic, whatever your nationality is, we are the family of God and we are one with Jesus Christ. That's different than the rest of this world. Can I hear an amen? That's who we are in Jesus Christ. We are the family of God, the sons of God, the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. That's who we are. We're one. We have eyes to see. We have the heavenly lens. Amen? So, number one, we must have faith in God. This is how I started off. We must have faith in Jesus Christ. We must be born again or we'll be in delusion. It even says in 2 Thessalonians, listen closely if you're listening online, we can be deceived. We can be deceived. And this is a time that you do not want to be deceived. You want to be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. You want to have faith in God. You want to be immovable. God can keep you in his love and we will stand for God's word everywhere we go. We are not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God on the salvation. His gospel is beautiful. We're not rewriting the gospel of Jesus Christ in 2022. Can I hear an amen? The reason why people don't know it is because they don't read it. They don't read the word of God. This is truth from Genesis to Revelation. And only the Holy Spirit, this is awakened to the truth, only the Holy Spirit can keep you from the lies. Only the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2, 27 tells us that if we remain in him and the anointing remains in us, hallelujah, hallelujah, the anointing remains in us and his word remains in us there is an anointing that breaks the yoke of every enemy every lie all deception all delusion amen listen we are born to love <laughs> we are born to share god's love with the world in need we have to understand that every single person that has come against us doesn't know Jesus. And if they do, we have to look and just be a light in this dying world. We have to be a light. It, the time is short. We do not want to have the attributes of slander, of accusation. We want to stand up and, and love the people in this world like Jesus did. He sat with sinners and the prostitutes. And he sat with Zacchaeus. And he came in. And we got to have something. We got to carry God's love and light. He is love and he is light. And now he said, now you are the light of this world. We don't remain in darkness. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen? I am going to read... Uh, John 15, quickly, uh, we're just going to jump into a couple of nuggets, but we need to have faith. We need to be born of God. We need to understand one thing. Every day counts. We don't know when Jesus Christ is coming back, so we need to awaken to truth. We got to be the true church. We do not want to be lu lukewarm. There's a church in the Bible where it says that 
It says this in the Bible. It says they think they're alive, but they're truly dead. Are we alive inside? Do we exercise our spirit man? Do we speak the word of God? Do we worship him in spirit and in truth? We had God's presence here strong during worship. We were on our knees. We were singing. We were laughing. We were dancing. We were speaking in the spirit. We were singing in the spirit. We were si uh, singing in the, in the natural there was a love and a light that was in this place. Why? Because we came to the Lord to drink this morning of who he is. Our eyes were fixed on Jesus. Our eyes were fixed on things above. Amen? So, uh, in the book of John, I want to read John 15. I want to um, talk a little bit about abiding this is the most important chapter for you to grow in Christ. John 14, 15, and 16, and, the, and 17 have been my devotion, if you will, and 13, those five chapters over the last 19 years. I don't preach out of it much. I did years ago constantly. But I feel the body of Christ is no longer abiding. There's a lot of people in the body of Christ. I've even been super busy in ministry and traveling around up and down the states and, you know, preaching and teaching. And we're, we're seeing people saved and delivered and healed and set free and filled with the Spirit every place we go. We are seeing people touched. And um, just a quick testimony, uh, a, a woman lost uh, her children uh, in a car accident. Uh, and this is just a, a testimony that came from two weeks ago. Uh, two, three weeks ago. I've been out every weekend. I can't remember which church and which people, but I remember the testimony because there's power in the testimony. The testimony was for she was heartbroken. Car accident with two of her children were killed. One of the daughters lived and she lived and she was a believer, but her heart was, you know, can you imagine the tragedy, the trauma? <clears throat> Anyway, you, can, you can't imagine the trauma and the tragedy and everything that happened. Yeah, the, the accident was on Mother's Day. Not this year, another year. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. Listen, every day is a blessing. Every day is the grace of God. We got to live thankful. She came out to hear, a, uh, uh, she watched this service for one month online and then decided to come out, and I happened to be the guest speaker. And I, talk, I talked about the power of forgiveness, how we're uh, unlocked out of our own prison, resentment, regret, holding abuse, holding uh, disappointment, frustration, um, all the different things that we have in our life. This woman came out, and in the presence of God, and in the power of forgiveness, when we forgive our uh, person that comes into our lives or people, she, in, in a moment, was set free and forgave the person that, by accident, car accidents happen. But we'll hold something, and the devil will hold us prisoner in our own jail. When we have resentment and regret and rejection, the devil is holding us. It's the devil we got to lay it all down, surrender, and get on our knees before the Lord and say, take all my sin away. Take all my brokenness away. Your blood was enough. It was holy, set apart. It was pure and perfect. That's what God can do. We had singing. We had dancing. We had people free. We had people crying and laughing. People were laid out all over the place. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was there. And the testimony of being set free, I had to forgive a lot. I was the speaker. I had to let a lot of things go because Jesus Christ, he paid for it. And if he said he's my healer, he's going to heal my soul, he's going to heal your soul. He's going to heal your heart, he's going to heal my heart. We have to understand every offense, every ugly thing that happened in your life was run by the father of lies. Do we truly believe that it was the person that did this? Or do we truly believe that our struggle is not against flesh and blood? 
What do we believe? If we're holding something against somebody, we truly don't believe that statement. That verse you can just cross out in your Bible today and say, no, I do not believe this. That our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the powers of principalities, the demons, the devil, in, this, in the prince of the power of air. We are children of God, but the whole world is under the control of the evil one. Well, I don't know. This person just did this, and they should know better. They're a Christian. And, or this person. No, what? Do we have a problem with people? Or did Jesus Christ pay the price bought us by his precious blood, and he said it is finished. Do we believe it or not? Do we believe truth or not? Do we pick and, and choose the scriptures that we believe or not? Do we want to change the gospel or not? What do we want to do? What do we want to awaken to this morning? Amen? We only can grow in God and be transformed supernaturally. You can't change yourself, and I can't change myself. Because if we try to be a good person for so long, our heart is still got what we have in it for so long. We need to be cleansed. We need to be washed. We need to be sanctified. We need to be transformed by the power of the Spirit. Oh, well, I don't know, Tracy, if I want the Holy Spirit. I have church attendance. I go over to this church. I don't know about the Holy Spirit. We're all about Jesus. Let me tell you who's more about Jesus than anybody, the Holy Spirit. The ho <laughs> Come on, laugh a little bit. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit, Spirit is the revealer of truth. Amen? By the way, I was slowing down today. I don't think so. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of truth. John 15, I am the true sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends the vine is my father. Now, Jesus Christ is the vine, right? We are the branches, and the father is pruning. The father is looking at the fruit in our lives. He says he cares for the branches connected to me, by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. Now, this is, now you all have your, your Bibles out there. I'm just, this uh, translation is very rich to me. Um, it's the Passion Translation this morning. Jesus is the vine. This is how we need to look at ourselves in him. It's a perfect description of how we look inside our hearts, our souls, our spirit, how we can look at our own being with Christ, with the full Trinity. It says, the words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you. Do we believe it? The word is cleansing us. We were sanctified and set apart the minute you said, Jesus is Lord over my life. The minute that we believe there's a sanctification that happened that separated us from the world at that moment. There is something that happened that we had to realize the minute we got born of God, we were no longer a human being. We are a new creation in Christ. Can I hear an amen? We have to know this. So you must remain, now listen to this, verse 4, in life union with me. This is all red letters. Jesus is talking. For I remain in life union with you. We must remain in life union. We are united with Christ. We must acknowledge him from morning to night if we want to stay abiding. For as a branch is severed from the vine, will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. We must remain and stay connected. I'm married. I live with Arnie. If I move to Minnesota, we would definitely be not connected. I could say he's my husband, 
but I haven't seen him or talked to him. Oh, I talked to him at 9 o'clock on the phone for like 10 minutes, but that's the relationship that God is showing us. Jesus Christ is the bridegroom, and we are the bride. He wants an intimate relationship with him, whether we believe it or not, because this is what John 15 is saying right here. I am the sprouting vine, and you are my branches. When you see a tree, they have branches. The branches are on the tree. He cursed the fig tree because it was fruitless. We do not want to stand before God and not bear fruit. We want to be pruned by the Father so we can be fruitful. It talks about the fruit of the Spirit, but he's saying fruitful all together in our lives here. He says, as you live in union with me as your source, fruitful, fruitfulness will stream from within you. See, the fruit cannot come from the outward man. The fruit that we have, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control comes from the inside. Because you know when you know you don't have any of that fruit? When a problem arises. <laughs> Amen? When things are going smooth, we can look like the nine fruit of the Spirit. But if something comes our way, that's when we see what we truly have. Amen? <clears throat> I know we're getting ready to take communion. The band can uh, come back up. It says here, as you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. I want the takeaway today to, to be this. You can take it or you can discard it. All day long, every minute that you're not taking every thought captive that doesn't line up with God, because that's what he tells us to do. Do we believe that? I know I have a lot of thoughts that are going crazy in my mind. Am I taking them captive? Am I letting them torture or torment me? Are you letting these thoughts torment you? I want you to remember that God lives on the inside. Do we believe this truth today? You will have as much of the Lord Jesus Christ and his spirit and his life in you as you want. You can see by the fruit of your life and your lifestyle is birth from the inside. He says, but when you live separated from me, you are powerless. We are powerless. The Bible says in Romans 5 that when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Now we have God's power. We have God's power in the inside of us. That's what we have. We have God's power in the inside of us. I want to say this. We want to awaken the truth. And I said a lot of verses today. I want you to go out. I want you to share this with your friends. This is just a few of the scriptures I talked about today. But Jesus Christ says he is our life, Colossians 3. It says he is our life and we stand with him on that day. We're going to stand with him in glory. Do we believe that? <laughs> Amen. We want to believe that. This is a real life. This is a life that is birthed from the inside. Now, you might have been born again for 20 years, and you're saying, wow, I need to get started. And that's okay. I want to I teach you how to awaken on the inside. He says, if a person is separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. Wow. If he says the branches, which he calls us, are cut off and thrown into the fire, to be burned. What is that saying? I don't want to be the cursed fig tree that has no fruit. Jesus wasn't happy, right? We want to bear that fruit from the inside. You know, we want to <clears throat> honor Jesus in his blood here in just a moment. But if you live in a life union with me, Jesus says, and if my words live powerfully within you, the Word of God is grafted in our minds and in our hearts, the spirit of our mind inside of us. This is what I believe. This is why I am the way I am. This is why I live right now the way I live. Because Jesus is coming back to get me. 
That's, that's right in the front of my mind every day. I want to be on the narrow road. I want to lay down my life. I want to pick up my cross and follow him. I want to do whatever he wants me to do. I don't want to be ashamed of Jesus in these last times when they take the book away from us or they're, they're taking out everything. Why? Because Christ is the only one with power. Christ is the only one that is the source of heaven and earth. Christ is the only one that has the final word in people's lives. Christ is filled with power. Christ is filled with all the authority and power on this earth. Christ has created everything. You and me. Jesus Christ. God, our Father. The Holy Spirit of truth. It's what we need to focus on if you want to spend eternity in heaven. Maybe you never gave your heart and life to Jesus. Maybe you're thinking, who is this person? Listen, it's not about religion. It's about relationship with Jesus Christ on the inside. And when we take time that we're grafted in and the fruit of his life inside of us, that's the fruit. It's the fruit of the life of Christ. It's his life. It's his life inside of us that's got to manifest. Not my life. He said, I'm dead. I was dead. I was buried with him. I rose to the new life like you did. Amen. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are mature disciples who glorify my father. He says, I love each of you with the same love that the Father loves me. You might continually let my love nourish your hearts. If you keep my commands, you will live in my love. See, his commands are are burdensome. If you're listening online, it's the love of God that saturates our heart. It's not condemnation. It's not rules and regulations. When you fall in love with somebody, you obey him. You want to. You want to adore him. You want to love him. You want him to become so real inside your life that you become undone in the presence of God. Amen? He says, just as I have kept my father's commandments, for I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. It's the love of God. (laughs) You want to give him your heart this morning. Just right where you are online just say I give you my heart I lay down my life you're the only true God everlasting life is to know the true God and his son Jesus Christ the blood of Jesus will wash you clean right now you'll be set apart and sanctified you will be born into God's family today if you just repent and change the way you think and give your heart and life to Jesus Christ he will do something in you and through you and change you from the inside out and you will bear much fruit and call yourself a disciple of Jesus Christ get your elements online today and take communion with us as we, can I have a communion cup? We're going to take communion as Doug and Jeff are so graciously here playing background music. We want to celebrate our inheritance. We want to celebrate our identity. We want to celebrate the blood of Jesus. We want to celebrate that when his body was broken, it says in Hebrews 10, 10, that we were sanctified. In that moment, we hung on the cross with him. He had you and I on our minds, on his minds. This is what we have to believe. He said that we were crucified with him and we no longer live. He said that we crucify the flesh and those ungodly desires and those ungodly passions if we're one with him, amen. On that night that he was betrayed. (laughs) I believe the healing power of God is going right through the online right now. I believe there's something happening that somebody's listening right now and you're getting on your knees online right now and you're just saying, I surrender. I can't do this anymore in my own strength. I want to know you. The fellowship of your suffering and the power of your resurrection in me. I want to know. I want to have fellowship with the suffering of Jesus Christ that we're going to have here this morning. We're going to fellowship with you, Jesus. (laughs) We're going to fellowship with you 
in your suffering, Lord. We're, we're going to remember what you did for us, God. You are our God, our Lord, our Savior, our Bridegroom, our King. You're the judge of the living and the dead. And you're all in all. You're in us. You're through us. And you're alive and well. You rose from the dead on that night that he was betrayed. Let's just tell him right now before we take this that we're sorry that we've ignored him so much. Lord, we've ignored you, Lord. We, we, we sang about, we just added you to an agenda, but there's nothing else. Come back today. Split the sky. Take your bride. Revelation 19 Ministries will be out here tonight at 6 p.m. at 603 Penn Avenue. Invite your friends and your family. We're going to get in the presence of God like we are this morning. Come out. Get in God's presence, His glory, His power. He said, This is my body. He says, What's was broken that night he gave thanks and he said this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance for me of me there is an action to be taken God cleanse our hearts take everything away from us this morning let's just just believe that what you already said you did happened whether we see it or not let's believe for one moment that we won't be a slanderer or we won't live in, in the things that the devil has come and brought to us, God. That we'll remember your body was broken. We were sanctified and set apart. You went to the whipping post and we're fellowshipping with you today, Lord. We're going to take this right now, if you're watching online, break it in half. Or if you took a cracker or whatever, break it and believe. That your body's being healed today because he went to the whipping post. Just believe, whether you see it or not, that your heart, you might have been abused. It wasn't fair. It was humiliating. But Jesus said it wasn't even humiliating for him to go to the cross. It was the joy set before him. These are the secrets that when we know Jesus Christ, who he is and what he paid for, and that the word of God is true. We'll have an encounter with God, a love encounter. We'll never be the same when we believe. We'll never be the same when we believe. So break the bread and eat and enjoy the bread, the body of Christ, the living bread. On that same night he was betrayed, he took the cup and he lifted it to heaven and said, this is my blood and the new and everlasting covenant. This is the covenant in my blood. I'm going to shed my blood so you'll have this eternal covenant forever. So this is my blood that was given for you. Let the blood and his whipped body and his hands that were nailed to the cross and his feet and the spear that went in his side and all the whippings and the, the, the spitting and the, the mocking, the crown of thorns. Think about how that felt. You love us so much, Lord. We're going to drink this cup and remember you. And not just once in a while. We're going to get up and believe that you live inside of us. Fill us, Lord. Healing, deliverance. And we will proclaim your death. We will proclaim your death until you return. In Jesus' name, amen. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. We believe, Lord. We believe. Help us in our belief. You are here. Thank you, Jesus. Turning lives around. I worship you. 
worship you. I worship you. We love you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for revealing Jesus. You are here, mending every heart. Telling us things to come. I worship you. You're real, Lord. You're real. We love you, Lord. You're real. If you want, if you came to Christ online, we will give you a Bible. We will give you everything that Christ has given us to, to equip you, to encourage you, to, to grow you up and to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, bearing much fruit for Jesus everywhere you go. We are his disciples. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 